I didn't film anything today. Just you bringing me fuel. That's about it. So welcome back to the good old Southern IA. It's time for us to pull some anhydrous ammonia, which is our nitrogen source for next year's crop. And I've got, oh, FS is calling me now. Hold on one second. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. We got steering in the quad track now uh, that works for about 10 acres and then it won't work anymore. That's, it's, it's driving me insane, insane. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, FS was calling me, this is, FS is bar and FS actually brings us the tanks. Uh, so if something breaks, they fix it on there. They're pretty good. It's Sunday morning, 8.30, send them a video, they call me. I mean, are they perfect? No, but do they try really hard? Yes. So really don't have too many complaints about that. And they keep me in the smoke. If, if I'm gonna pull, they're gonna have me tanks. So I, it's good for me. But anyways, yes, this is flashing. The 535, has steering in it now. That works about 15% of the time. Right down there is my controller. She's just hanging out down there. So what I installed was actually a Steady Steer Z2. I gotta make sure it stays on the steering because uh, I'm gonna sidebar real quick because what will happen is it'll flinch itself and then it won't even tell me that it kicked out the steering it'll just start going whatever way it flinched and it will work flawlessly like perfectly for 20 30 minutes or so and then it just goes to hell and i i cannot figure out why i can't there there just did it there we go see look at you look at you see now watch steering wheel movement is detected so it tries to kick it out there, it kicked it in. Is it gonna steer? Yep, it's uh, gonna steer until it flinches again. Yesterday, it makes it hard to YouTube actually when you have to steer. So I pulled like 160 acres yesterday, steered every single one of them, which kind of stinks because we're on a big flat runs behind us here. And I'm running Terrastar X. So I wanna be able to pull directly on top of my anhydrous ammonia that's causing me issues. Anyways, so back to this. So this is my first, if you guys didn't know, I'm actually an Ag Leader dealer. This is my first hydraulic steering install that I've done. I usually, how I train myself is that I get the product and I put it into one of my tractors 
that way I know kind of the nuances of uh, what the system can do because if people call I need to be able to help them right you know turning 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 see if she'll get me on the line look at that smooth operation for now so set it up did the calibrations things work good pulled for a little while started giving me issues I actually reached out to another Ag Leader dealer uh, Evan Watson I think it just screwed up again did it nope not yet you guys watch Brian's videos they call him Dr. Watson to see if he'd heard anything like this because that's how you learn a lot of these things is you run into the problems and then you know how to fix them and I've just been banging my head against the wall it's it's I can't figure it out how something works perfectly and then decides not to I, it just doesn't make sense this did have green star in here i'm almost wondering if i was just been better off to buy a john deere receiver globe and uh put a brown box or something like that in here for steering i don't know i probably should have done that probably should have done that but i like egg leader stuff i really like egg leader stuff uh that's why i wanted to go this way funny story I guess you could say so the day that I was installing all this stuff onto this quad track like there's a wheel angle sensor down in there I'll show you probably later I, I mean I started this calibrated it did a whole bunch of stuff then I finally moved to where I was gonna pull anhydrous ammonia I did have a battery in the GoPro and that was a mistake they're on the charger which dangles right there for you guys and uh, I'm going down the road and they, I mean, I've been around this tractor all day, and I'm going down the road, and right there, out comes this furry thing. No joke, just comes right out of the hood. I got dang raccoon, was under the hood all day when I was installing this stuff. And I mean, it took me probably two, two to two and a half, probably two hours to do all this. But there was a raccoon, just sleeping under this hood. I checked the oil. I didn't pull the hood open. Going down the road, 20 miles an hour, out comes this raccoon, rings out right there, and it's like, oh crap, scares me, right, you know? I gotta grab the GoPro because I'm like, this isn't gonna be good for this raccoon. No battery, so you guys can record it, so you guys don't get to see it, you just get to hear about it. He crawls out right there, comes to this track, he hangs out right there, sees me, and he's like, oh crap, and he heads to this track right there. Oh, there we go, we just lost some steering. He has to the ladder right there and he starts to go down face first and i was like oh buddy this ain't gonna be good for you and it's like sure enough turn around i look no more raccoon and uh raccoon plus 53 000 pound tractor with tracks on a highway that was a little bit of excitement look just broke a share pin I am out of gas. I'm doing about 40 acres per set of tanks right there. Uh, we'll give you the rundown of how this bar works and uh, just show you a couple of things. So what we need is our rubber gloves and then I choose between my mask or goggles. Science! What we're pulling is called an anhydrous ammonia. You don't really see a lot of this on YouTube actually. Um, I'm leaking a little bit back there too. People will refer to it as gas. Uh, it's actually a liquid until it hits the air. Then it has like a white vapor. So you got the bar here. The bar has knives. So there's 19 knives on this one. We're leaking, yeah. That's gonna smell real nice. The smoke comes out of the butt tanks. Not supposed to be leaking there, but that hose has been giving me issues. Through the hoses, this one has a dual cooler right there. Sends it to distributing towers which are up there, right there, if you guys can see where I'm pointing, which sends it through all these hoses and into each one of the knives, injects it into the ground. There you go. Uh, this is definitely, uh, say it with me here, an inhal, oh, dang it, inhalation hazard. 
Did I even still say that right? So you always want to be upwind of it. This is the most dangerous stuff that I deal with. Uh, this will kill you pretty quickly. Because when you get into the smoke or the vapors and stuff like that, uh, it, it literally takes your breath away. Anhydrous ammonia is attracted to water, uh, it will, so it wants to go to your eyes and your lungs. Uh, that's why sometimes I wear, a lot of the times I wear the face mask, you guys just won't be able to hear me. This is super, super cold too, so it will burn you also. Which is something that people don't think about, getting fr freeze burn. So if this stuff's so dangerous, why do you use it? This is 82% nitrogen, so 82% of the volume is nitrogen. So that's the higher, one of the highest sources, if not the highest source of nitrogen that you can get to apply. It's stable in the soil. It will bond with the soil until it's converted to a nitrate. So the plant can use it. So why are we pulling it on during the winter or getting cold? Well, after the ground freezes or gets below a certain temperature, it just basically won't convert to the nitrate. So it's stable here, along with the fact that we put NSERV in the ground, which is the nitrogen stabilizer. So this is a really good way for us to put our nitrogen on. Our ground can hold all the nitrogen in one pass for the year. Um, if you had the option to, I think that it's better to apply nitrogen multiple times throughout the year. Uh, but if you look at our fields, which this is one of our bigger square fields. Split applying nitrogen gets kind of hard on some of these guys. They'll run over a lot of corn. So it's a one and done nitrogen program. We can side dress if we choose to, but we can hold all the nitrogen for the year. It works good. It, it works good. My guess is it probably split enough. Well, no, this is the tank that I said needed new O rings. They're empty. Anyway, that O ring. Look. Uh, these masks these masks were good they protect my face you know and like direct inhalation of the anhydrous ammonia because if I was standing there by that tire I probably wouldn't be able to breathe right now so you're always playing the wind but you just saw how much like smoke vapor and stuff like that's created when you get a leak so say a hose breaks a fitting breaks um, anything that can happen you know it's a liquid just like imagine if you had like a water hose on your sprinkler same system basically oh yeah and then your hose is under pressure too this mask you don't really need to wear one of these um like a lot of the times i'll just wear goggles and stuff like i have seen ones where it's like got the face protector in the goggles that'd be nice what happens is is these cartridges get into the ammonia and every breath I take in this has ammonia flavor to it. We're down to our last 100 acres of anhydrous. You guys are gonna be rolling with me the rest of the day. We're doing about 40 acres an hour when we're moving. When we're busting a bunch of shear bolts, we're doing more like no acres an hour. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the ground I got left is high shear bolt and breaking probabilities. Yeah. We've got our next set of tanks right there. They'll have to bring me two more tanks after these. One, no, they'll have to bring me another one more tank. And I guess a good time as any when you divide these videos up and you start again. Um, if you guys have made it this far, hey, I don't ask a lot. Hey, hit that thumbs up button. We are getting pretty close to 50,000 subscribers down here in Southern Iowa. That'd be a pretty nice goal to meet by the end of the year. Uh, I'd really enjoy it. Maybe I'll bundle it up, take it to Vegas, put it on red, and see if we can double it to 100. I, I don't think it works that way, but you can always try. 
So, anyways, shameless plug. Take a second for me, please. Hit that thumbs up button. Red, blue, dog. Red, blue, dog. Yeah. So today is December 1st, which is a special day for this quad track. It marks one year with us. And you know, usually like one year anniversaries are kind of celebrated and stuff. Uh, except for with equipment, it marks the pavement day. So today is quad tracks pavement day. Woo! And so at the end of the year, I'll probably have put uh, 400 hours on it, which is 10 40 hour weeks, which is an interesting, I guess, way to think about that. So far, other than my steering not working, pretty happy with it. I think I might have that figured out. Uh, I think maybe the solenoids on top of the steering valve are getting hot and not working. Or if, yeah, I'm thinking that might be it. As soon as we get done pulling smoke, she's got a date with the tile plow. But so far, pretty happy with my purchase. I don't think I got a deal on this tractor by any means. I think I paid the market market or maybe even a little bit above the market because when I bought this it was December last year and the price of grain had already started to tick up. But I would say though that if she was to go to auction now, she's probably worth more than what I paid for it. So at this point, would I make the purchase again on the quad track? Yes, absolutely. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard for me to not buy anything that's not a quad track, or at least on tracks. I'm I'm liking the tracks. I mean, honestly, if I had the capabilities, which I don't, because our planter doesn't, this doesn't have enough remotes and the planter's a two point, so I need a three point for this tractor. I think that this would make a good planting tractor even. On 30 inch rows, I, I think this would make a good planting tractor. I don't think I'd be scared of doing that. But the new home will be planting next year and this one will be on tillage. sent me some jerky and the best part about it is that it's good jerky and I know bad jerky seems kind of odd that you get bad jerky and yeah it's it's possible you know because when you're standing there at the gas station and you look at the bag of beef jerky and it's like $9.99 and you look it's like there ain't any jerky in there and then you look at a big bag of beef jerky and it's also $9.99 and you make the bad decision to go with the big bag of beef jerky and you can't even eat it and it becomes dog treats that's good beef jerky thanks
Well, I just got a bad news phone call from Case about my valve. I was thinking was like solenoids open and close, like a turn left, turn right type of thing. Apparently that's not how these quad tracks work. So the valve on these quad tracks is 3000 bucks. And I don't even know if it's the valve. Like I don't know if it's the valve. So I'm not gonna spend 3000 bucks without doing it. So I'm gonna be on the phone with Ag Leader tomorrow morning trying to figure this thing out once I get unhooked from this bar that's behind me. If there's anybody in the area near me, knows where I'm at or something like that, uh, happens to have a green star display in Globe that I can borrow for an afternoon to put in my quad track and see if it steers because that's what was in here before uh, to eliminate that fact that it's an issue with the tractor. That's, that's the only way I can separate the two. Put a green star in here, still has an issue, issue with the tractor. Put the green star in here, issue doesn't rear its head, issue with the ag leader. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date, but yeah, if you're near me, I need to borrow a, a green star display and a globe. We are going to make it. I'm going to run out of smoke. I'm out of smoke. I'm out of diesel fuel. I have literally, oh, I'm, I, I'm even, I don't even want to put my throttle forward. I mean, I need to make it to the front, unhook these tanks. They'll bring me a thousand tomorrow and uh, we'll finish it up and I'll see you guys in the morning. Beautiful morning. Only got a long sleeve shirt on. December 2nd. I don't even think I need the long sleeve shirt on. Gotta like that. So we just got a little tank this morning. Uh, we've just got 10 acres right through here. There was probably something buried here in this 10 acres. So I'm gonna break probably 300 knives. It'll end up taking me all the way to noon just to pull 10 acres. Gotta set your expectations right. It wouldn't, you know, normally take 30 minutes and be done. No. 10 feet. 10 feet and I broke one. Okay, it was a little longer than 10 feet. So as I fix this, so this, 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 this. So as I fix this one this morning and to finish out this video because I feel like I might get frustrated in this 10 acres. And you guys have seen all this. Ugh, still lots of money now. People have wondered what a fertilizer price has done. So this is nitrogen, which we've talked about earlier in the video. Last year, I think we paid right around $400 a ton. Oh, that's about whoa. I usually try and keep my ear to what prices are doing on inputs and stuff like that. And I'd heard rumblings that there was a chance that full anhydrous prices might reach a thousand dollars a ton. We decided to pull the trigger and book all our anhydrous. There comes some risk with doing that. Obviously the price could go down. You're also buying something that if the weather turns bad, you might not even be able to apply. And then you could also look at it as like, I should have been tiling during this time. And you know, all those are probably true factors. Now that the end's gonna be on here in a little bit, we're ready to gear off for next year plant corn. It worked out that we booked it this year. It hasn't quite doubled since we booked it, but it's getting pretty close. Makes you feel bad for guys that don't have any end down. I'm, if I'm staring at like renting some more ground and stuff like that, that has gotta have corn on it and $1,500 ton anhydrous 
maybe even more in the spring, who knows, maybe less, hopefully less. That's a lot of money. That's that's a lot of money. Because this like P and K, it's really not good, but you can forgo P and K for the year. You won't grow as good of a crop, but you will grow a crop. You try and grow corn without nitrogen, you aren't growing corn. So I personally don't see the price of N coming down. Maybe it might simmer its way down a little bit. Because the price of natural gas has come down and that's a component of the good old anhydrous ammonia. But I don't know. Maybe it'll push people towards more planting more soybeans and uh, the price of corn will jump up. I don't know. I think it might be interesting to see the fight between corn and soybean acres that's going to happen this winter. You know, might be wild. But I think that's where we're going to end this video, guys, uh, before I talk any more about anhydrous ammonia and, you know, how I'm pretty sure that the price increase of the anhydrous ammonia doesn't have anything to do with the price increase of corn. It's just shortages, you know, just shortages, strictly shortages. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We have some Thailand videos coming. I got a review video of that Kenti 1421 coming for you guys along with other few fun things that we got. A little bit of fun. Anyways, subscribe, like, don't break cheer bolts, and we'll see you next time. But hey, look. Look, look, look. That's new. That's new. Inside one's new. She'll spin the earth now. <laughs>